Welcome to part three of our bouncing ball simulator. So let's see what we have so far before we get started. So we've got a ball and it starts off bouncing to the, the right and it hits the wall, bounces to the left. And again, it goes forever because we're not factoring in uh, yeah, energy loss and momentum loss and all that sort of thing. And what we want to do in this lesson is to add multiple balls. So this is going to be a screen full of bouncing balls. So first thing we need to do is, and watch where I'm doing this, I'm doing it before this section of the code. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list and I'm going to call it balls and it's going to be empty for now. Okay, now what I have to do here is to create uh, a number of balls. We'll make 10 for example. So I'm going to go for, I'm just going to do an underscore because it's, you use it in place of a, a variable, in range, and if I want 10, I'm going to use 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to append to my balls list a turtle, dot turtle, oops, capital T, parentheses. Look at the number of parentheses there. It's just like what I did here, but I'm appending. So that will actually create a list of turtles for me. Now, what I need to do is to create another loop. So for ball in balls, uh, hopefully you're familiar with loops. This is what would be called a for each loop in another language. And so what this means is for each ball in the list of balls, do these things. Okay. Now, this is very, very important. I, I get asked this question all the time you need to delete this line. Okay? This line creates a new turtle. We don't need to do that because we already created the turtles here and at the same time put them into the balls list. Okay, so let's try this and see what happens. Okay, so something happened. Um, so I see at least one ball is bouncing and I see another ball up here. So the more astute among you have probably realized that we actually have nine balls on top of each other uh, or up there. So what's happening is they're all at the same spot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them start off at a random place. So to do that, I'm going to use the random module. So first I have to import it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do down here is now I could do this on one line, but this will make it a little more clearer probably. Random.randint. And so x can be from, let's say, negative 290 to 290. So that'll start at somewhere a different x coordinate. So I'm going to save that and see what happens. OK, so that's, that's an improvement. So you can see that all the balls are starting in different spots, but only one is moving. Okay. The reason is, up here, we've gone through all the different balls, okay. but down here, it's only the last ball of the list that's being acted upon. So what we got to do is all this code, except for the update code, same thing, for ball in balls. And this will go through every single ball and move it. So you notice I hit tab there. Uh, so instead of just moving one ball, it's going to move the first ball, second ball, third ball, all the way through, and then repeat. So let's take a look at that. OK. OK, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the basics of, of this particular lesson. We'll, we'll save some updates for the, next, the last lesson, or next lesson, I should say. Um, so basically, just to reiterate, we've created a list of balls. It's empty. We've added 10 balls. Okay. And then what we've gone through is we said for each ball, make that ball a circle, make the color green, pen up, speed zero. In this, choose a random x coordinate from negative 290 to positive 290. Move the ball there and at 200 in height. That ball is going to have a dy of zero and a dx of two. Then down here, all the code that we did for one ball, we just do it for all the balls using a for loop. Okay. If you like it, subscribe, like, or comment. Thanks.